again there guys, I'm here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design and in this video today we're going to show you how to do a really simple and effective sunset painting whilst adding a little bit more of a, a foliage detail to give a really simple but beautiful landscape painting. I want to thank everyone for watching the daily video series that I've recently been doing. It was pretty tough going, I'll be honest, trying to upload a video every single day. So I really do take on board all the feedback and, and the comments, particularly the constructive comments that you guys were giving, as it really does give us good ideas as creators in terms of what it what it is the viewers actually want you to do. So a few of the comments were really that they wanted more of an instructional video. So that's what the latest series is going to be where we really focus on a little bit more in terms of technique and showing you guys how to do these paintings so that you really can follow along. So as you can see here I'm using a sponge. I'm a massive fan. If you've seen a lot of my videos recently you'll know that I love to use a sponge just to blend acrylic paints. They just have so much control and it really does help you to get those gorgeous particularly light sky effects when you're trying to get some of those nice contrasting streaks going across the sky or if you're doing water as well they're pretty effective as well so you can see here I've just started with the yellow and I'm just putting a small amount of the warm red onto my canvas red can be really overpowering so it's very important that you're quite frugal when it comes to using the red so that you don't dominate your painting with that red color. So this time with the sponge, I'm just gently pushing down. If I push too hard, I'm going to end up blending the colors too much. And I really want to get some of those lovely strokes working through. So you can see, I'm gonna keep switching the sponge over. I do tend to have two or three sponges to hand as well. So if I need to have a clean sponge quickly, then I can just move straight onto a new sponge. That's probably the biggest disadvantage, guys, when it comes to painting with sponges. You can't just clean them like you would with a brush. Uh, they're a little bit more difficult when it comes to actually washing the paint out. So it's always good just to have two or three on standby. And of course, if it comes to recycling, these things are not great for the environment. So it's always great if you finish with them in your sink, always hold on to old sponges because they are brilliant for painting with. So just adding a little bit more yellow on here because that red, as I said, if, you, if you're going to use it too much, it will dominate the painting. So I'm just trying to get more of an effect now of the water effect. So I'm going for more of a streak. Just put a little bit of white onto the brush as well, just to get some of these colors blending through a little bit. I'm not worried about the bottom left and bottom right hand side of the canvas because that's where the tree detail is going. I'm really more just concentrating at this stage now and, and getting those lovely streaky effects for the water. A lot of people ask what size canvases I tend to use. This canvas I'm using here, guys, is your 16 by 20 inch canvas. It's probably the equivalent of about an A3 size of paper. I just find they're a really nice size for, for doing landscape paintings like this. Um, but it depends on what you're more comfortable with. I used to use very large canvases just to really express the brush strokes a little bit more, but these are quite a nice uh, sort of size for if you're a beginner painter because they're not overwhelmingly big, but if they're too small, then you're gonna really struggle with some of the detail as well. So you can see I've moved over to the brush now and I've just gone straight on with the black to get that very dramatic silhouette painting of the, of the foreground coming through. So I've just sketched in the composition where I want the actual land to go. And I'm gonna start working in some of the texture. So this is a 35 mil painter's brush. These are brilliant when it comes to doing bushes or trees, a little bit like you would with a fan brush, but they just enable you to work a little bit more quickly. But you get a lovely textural quality if you're dabbing the brush down, almost just suggesting some of those nice forest trees in the background. I will be using a fan brush later guys to get a little bit more detail, but in terms of layering, and painting is all about layering, these brushes are brilliant for that. So I'm just sketching out where I want my tree line to go. And of course they help to really distribute the paint quite quickly as well. A lot of people ask why it is I like to paint quickly. Um, I mean, I try and keep my paintings to around 10 minutes. I used to spend hours, months on some of my paintings, but I find it much more free when I can paint in a quicker style because it loosens up some of those brush strokes. 
it's like with anything you can literally spend hours just trying to titivate a painting and, and perfect it which is absolutely fine some people really enjoy that process I like the process of distributing the paint actually feeling the manipulation of the paint and sometimes when you don't over control what you're doing with the paintbrush you get some fabulous effects so for example with these trees I could do this individually with a fine detail brush and it could literally take me half an hour to an hour whereas actually just using the right tools sometimes can really help speed up the process but just make it so much more rewarding as well everything in painting is all technique and it's certainly something even myself I know a lot of professional painters on YouTube you never stop learning it's great to get ideas from different youtubers from different artists um, and just to try different techniques so I'm just going to dab in these areas now just to just to give a bit more density to the actual forest where the the, the trees meet the waterline and of course we need to get some of those reflections in as well so this technique is a little bit tricky guys I'm going to pull some of the paint down ever so slightly but I want to have more of a dry brush technique in a moment so whereas I've gone quite thick with the paint for the trees themselves when it comes to doing some of the reflections we need to have a drier brush so I'm actually going to get rid of some of that excess paint just now just to move it around at the bottom so just to fill in some of these areas and then I'm going to show you what I mean by this dry brush, brush technique in a moment so I'm just going to fill in this, block it in, in effect, it's just working in layers at the moment. Fill in the foreground. This is what you would call a, a flat paint. You don't want any texture in terms of colour. I've just gone for the sheer silhouette, just because it makes that gorgeous sunset colour really stand out. So this is what I mean now about that dry brush technique I was talking about. You don't want to have as much pigment on your brush so that you're just giving little wisps of paint and it gives a lovely sense of reflection coming through the water. But the direction of the brush is important here, guys. So I'm working in a very horizontal fashion so that you get that lovely streaky effect as, as the trees reflect off the water. For anyone that really struggles painting water, if you are using horizontal lines, whether it's through reflection or through um, even shaded areas, that is how you're going to get that lovely water effect. It's almost like a shimmer. And the great thing as well is using these larger, so this is a 10 mil brush that I'm using, but again, it's a painter's brush. What I mean by the painter's brush, it's literally a decorator's brush. They are brilliant for doing these type of effects. So you can actually do several brush strokes in one. Whereas if I was using a very small fine detail brush for this, it would be taking me an awful lot longer to do the same effect. You've almost got probably 50, even if not 100 brush strokes working in one. Now I've just moved on to a flat head brush. This is really going to help us now with some of those reflection lines. So again, still working in a horizontal manner to try and give that sense of water reflection. And just working quite thickly with the titanium white here to really give a nice strong dynamic colour. A lot of people struggle trying to get these really vivid colours. If you're using water on your brush guys, you're going to lose the opacity of the paint. So I always have tissues to hand so that I can keep my brushes nice and dry so that I've got a lot more control over the use of paint that I'm using. If you are struggling with, if you, or if your paint starts to dry out, you want to use a floating medium rather than water because that's really going to keep that quality of acrylic paint. So if I had used water for the section here, that white would not stand out against the background. And you really want to give a nice sharp dynamic contrast to show where the light is reflecting on the water. Just going to add a few more lines around here. 
you, you want to be careful that you don't go too thick and chunky with the lines as well because that's when it really loses that realistic quality. I'm just going to sketch in where the trees are going to go. So this is going to be the main feature of the painting now. It's really going to frame up the whole composition. So it needs to be quite a striking thick edge to that trunk. So the way I get those lovely thick sharp edges is I'm literally dragging the paint. So I've got a lot of pigments on my brush here and it enables me to control those lines much more effectively. If you've not got enough paint in your brush, you've got what I like to call crusty pigment, where you get those little streaks and lines and you, use, you lose control, rather, of the actual edge. So it's really important you have plenty of pigment on your brush to do these nice sharp edges. And of course, guys, do, do not forget that with trees, you always get thinner as you move away from the main trunk. That's one of the main errors that a lot of people do when they do trees, is that they make the trunks either too straight or the branches that are coming off the trees are too chunky. I have actually done a whole video on how to paint really effective and realistic trees, so I'll leave a link below for you guys if you want to check out that video. But for now you can see I'm just going to start working some more fine detail branches into this tree, but again making sure that each branch that moves away from the tree gets thinner and thinner and thinner. You really want to try as well to get movement going on in the branches. It's very easy to do sort of patterned lines. The brain naturally works in patterns. You've got to almost work against what the brain is telling you to do by doing irregular shapes to your branches. But as long as they're generally moving upwards, you could have a broken branch, for example, but you want to have that sense of none of the branches are coming off the, the actual tree. It's a 90 degree angle. They're always slightly floating upwards. That just gives a much more realistic effect to your tree. So just finishing off here with some really very thin lines. So again, you've got to have plenty of pigments on your brush to help really control those lines. This is the really therapeutic part of the painting. You can spend hours doing lovely fine detail branches, but for this purpose, I'm just gonna do a few. Just put a little couple over this side here too, just to even out the painting. The other technique you can do as well is you can just dab the paint very subtly. If you're not great at doing very thin lines, just give a suggestion of where those branches are going. And of course you can always hide any errors with, with some leaves on there. So like I said earlier, I was just going to finish off these trees with the fan brush just to add a little bit more height, a little bit more accuracy to those tops of trees as well. Fan brushes are amazing for painting trees with because they just give you such a realistic uh, foliage effect. I'm just, just giving some hints of where those treetops are going. And there you have it, sunset landscape. <laughs>